Hello, my name is Kelly Nolan, and I am a senior pharmacologist in the Compliance Enforcement Branch within the FDA CEDAR Office of Scientific Investigations. In this presentation, I will discuss how to request a discretionary certificate of confidentiality and how they are issued by FDA CEDAR. There is also a separate presentation available as a further resource that provides a general overview of certificates of confidentiality, or COCs, and the disclosure protections afforded by a COC. During this presentation, I will discuss who should request a discretionary COC, how to request a discretionary COC for studies involving FDA-regulated drug products, and describe the information that should be included in discretionary COC requests. And finally, I will cover the expectations for COC holders upon issuance of a COC in order to ensure the confidentiality of participants in their research. A Certificate of Confidentiality, or a COC, prohibits a researcher from disclosing identifiable, sensitive information about human subject research participants. The COC protects the privacy of participants by prohibiting the researcher from providing the name of a participant or disclosing any information that contain identifiable, sensitive information about the participant that was created or compiled for the research in any federal, state, or local civil, criminal, administrative, legislative, or other proceeding. There are exceptions to disclosure protections, such as if disclosure is required by federal, state, or local laws, for example, require disclosures for public health reporting of communicable diseases or child abuse reporting. Other examples of exceptions are, if necessary for the medical treatment of the individual, if made with the consent of the individual whose information is being requested, and for scientific research that is in compliance with applicable federal regulations for the protection of human research subjects. Federal agencies issue mandatory and discretionary COCs. Mandatory COCs are automatically issued for federal agencies, including NIH, CDC, and FDA for federally funded research. Discretionary COCs may be requested and are issued by FDA for non-federally funded research involving FDA regulated products. Who should request a discretionary COC from the FDA? To help ensure that discretionary COCs are issued to those entities who can comply with the requirements of the statutory provision, we recommend that only sponsors or sponsor investigators submit requests for discretionary COCs. That is, the individual who takes responsibility for or initiates the clinical investigation. This is to help ensure that discretionary COCs are issued to individuals and entities who can comply with the requirements of a COC. Keep in mind that an IRB may request that the investigator request a COC be obtained in order to secure IRB approval. It is recommended to first check with the study sponsor to determine if they have plans to request a COC before submitting the request yourself. Requests can be made to FDA for discretionary COCs for non-federally funded human subject research that involves the use or study of a product subject to FDA's jurisdiction. Prior to submitting a request for discretionary COCs to FDA, the potential requester should consider the following questions and be able to answer yes to all of these questions. Is the requester involved in human subject research in which identifiable, sensitive information is collected? Is the requester a sponsor or sponsor investigator or authorized representative? that is, the individual who takes responsibility for or initiates the clinical investigation. Does the human subject research for which a discretionary COC is being requested involve the use or study of a product subject to FDA's jurisdiction and subject to FDA's regulatory authority? And are the requester's research measures sufficient to protect the confidentiality of the identifiable sensitive information?
Requests for discretionary COCs for studies involving FDA-regulated drug products should be submitted to CEDAR at the email address provided on this slide. The request should include descriptive information about the study, as well as assurances that you can meet the statutory requirements of the COC. This information may be provided in a letter attached as a PDF to the email request. This slide includes the descriptive information that should be provided with the COC request to facilitate our review and issuance of a certificate. Include the name, address, and email address of the sponsor or sponsor investigator or an authorized representative. Include the National Clinical Trial or NCT number for clinicaltrials.gov, if applicable. This number should be provided upon registration on clinicaltrials.gov. Include the title of the study, the FDA application number as applicable. For CEDAR regulated studies, this is typically the investigational new drug application or IND number, unless there is an IND exemption. Finally, provide the signature of the sponsor, sponsor investigator, or authorized representative submitting the COC request. The requester should include information sufficient to allow FDA to assess whether the requester understands its obligations to comply with the COC statutory provisions. We recommend using the following language in a COC request letter to facilitate FDA's review. The next few slides are very text heavy and include specific language that can be included in a COC request to facilitate and streamline the review. You can pause the slides if you want to read everything. This language is also included in the final FDA guidance on COCs that is referenced later in this presentation. In summary, this language acknowledges that the requester is engaged in research involving identifiable, sensitive information and agrees to comply with the requirements to protect the confidentiality of that information. It then provides specifics about what the requester will not disclose or provide. The assurances then specifically describe the exceptions when disclosure is permitted, which were discussed in an earlier slide. And finally, an assurance that the signature represents a true and correct signature of the sponsor, sponsor investigator, or authorized representative who is authorized to submit the request on the sponsor's behalf. If the COC application is deemed complete and accurate, we will issue a discretionary COC to the requester. The COC recipient is expected to carry out statutory assurances described in the COC for the protection of human subject research participants. FDA CEDAR generally aims to review COCs within 60 days upon receipt of the request. This is a screenshot of what a certificate of confidentiality would look like. It includes a tracking number at the top, along with the name of the COC recipient and a brief description of the study for whom the COC applies. This is followed by language directly from the statute, defining identifiable, sensitive information and describing who the COC applies to. And is shown in this slide, the COC will reiterate the requirement of the COC holder to protect identifiable, sensitive information about research participants, as well as the exceptions to the disclosure protections. As a reminder, there is an FDA guidance document that provides all the information I presented on how to request a discretionary COC. The guidance can be accessed at the referenced website on this slide. The final guidance for COCs can be accessed at this website. Use the referenced email address to submit a COC request for studies involving FDA regulated drug products or for COC related questions. These are additional contacts for COC related inquiries at the different FDA centers. In summary, I would like to highlight the main points from this presentation. FDA issues discretionary certificates of confidentiality or COCs for non-federally funded research 
that studies a product subject to FDA's jurisdiction. CLC request letters should include descriptive information and assurances as described in the guidance. FDA CEDAR reviews CLC applications for completeness and assurance that the CLC applicant employed appropriate means to protect identifiable information. Upon issuance of the CLC, the CLC recipient is expected to carry out assurances to protect identifiable, sensitive information about human subject research participants. Thank you for listening.